Now you have a work table. Usually when it's in gear with the park and brake on, if we need to drag a vehicle, we just get uh, T-Dog to do it. Of course. Those spikes will come out and then he'll probably drizzle a little bit of concrete down in the hole. He'll probably do it like the uh, chefs do with the salt. We have Sean from Sean's Boosted Garage here and we are going to be recessing a scissor hoist into his concrete floor. Sean, you've had the scissor hoist for how long? Oh, like three years. I think I bought it from you like three years ago. And uh, he lent it to me at first and uh, of course, as soon as he lent it to me, the first time I lifted my car up, I'm like, oh, I need to have this now. So I've always wanted to uh, uh, set it in the floor. I've got these uh, two by sixes down here that I have to drive the car on, and sometimes if you don't get on them right, it doesn't. I mean, I've actually driven the car off them. Why do you even need them? You can just drive the car right over the hoist. Oh, the car's too low. Oh, the car's too low. Yeah. I just want to put the, put the hoist in the floor. It's going to make it nice and clean looking. It'll be hidden under the floor. It also keeps from um, impeding any work I got to do underneath the car. And what's your plan when the car is not here and the job is all done, what would we be looking at? Will you see the hoist or are you going to cover it? Oh no, it's going to be covered with uh, like a three quarter inch piece of plywood. What we've got planned now is we wanted to accurately position the hoist the best we could, optimally all around the walls, the front, the, the back door, space between the garage door. And we've actually got the, the hoist biased towards the center of the garage a little bit just so that that driver's side door can open uh, more freely. And it also was mentioned if you need to pull an axle, you can't have the vehicle right tight to a wall. So our next step is to get the car out of here, to get these two by sixes out of here. And then we're gonna snap a chalk line around the tight to the hoist. So we know exactly where the hoist is. So we're gonna cut that out, get the concrete out of here. Then we'll dig down and uh, try not to disturb the base when we're digging. We'll only dig what we need to yep. so that there's no need to compact before right. concrete gets yep. poured, right? So we'll be careful when we dig down, dig down as much as we need to, to get, uh, so that we can put in a thickness of concrete under the final floor height for the hoist. So maybe four or five inches we're gonna pour. And, and then we'll be drilling into the sides of the existing concrete and setting rebar in with some type of rebar concrete epoxy products. You can't cut just the size of the hole out. You need to cut out bigger than that so that when you pour new concrete, it can tie in with the old concrete. So we're gonna have a cut line here. This is gonna be original and remain. This surface, there will be concrete here, but it will be new concrete, and then it will drop down six inches and run along like this. So we were very precise in our measurement of the distance out from the wall to make sure the hoist is parallel with the wall. And we took our measurements from the hoist, measured out about 12 inches and snapped the chalk line. On this side, 12 inches, snap the chalk line and the same thing back there. So now we're done with the hoist and it is gonna be moved out of the way. And after that, we'll be cutting this floor. Here you can see us lining up the cutter against the snap chalk lines. And once we cut through, we use the pry bar to move the cut pieces out of the way and then lift them out of the hole. It was a tough job, but we got through it. The only other thing we want to do is cut this trench, right? What you probably just saw as a 30 or 40 second time lapse is about probably three or four hours of work. We just finally got them all cuts are done and uh, finally got them all broken up. So now it is, now we gotta do is just throw it all in the truck and then uh, make it sound like it's easy. Do you, do you want so. me to just take care of that for you? Or yeah, you sure, can... I'll, uh, let, me get my, let me get my white hat and you can... Oh, I'll have it all done before you time to get back. Yeah. This hoist that I have, it actually, it actually has a, like a hydraulic pump that goes with it. That's, that's this right here. So what I want to do is kind of take it off that cart and maybe mount it on the wall. Lay the hydraulic hose and uh, whatnot, you know, the power cord and all that stuff in that trough. Don't that big deal. tripping on your hydraulic line anymore. Right.
uh, we're now taking the, this level down six inches below where it used to be because th this height here is going to be the finished height of the final concrete. We didn't want to disturb down below because we're not going to compact this before we pour again. We're just, we're just only going to go down as far as we need to. We also have done some quick math. There are about 50 square feet here and underneath the hoist it's going to be probably five inches thick. Minimum four, but you know, we probably will go a bit thicker, five. And then on this edge right here, the top of there down to the bottom of that foam is about seven inches. So it's going to be seven inches. And this ground right here is going to be dug out, so it's actually going to slope down. So if, if the edge of the hoist is here and the concrete comes out to here, right underneath my finger along the perimeter of the hoist, it's going to be like 10 inches all the way around because there's a six inch vertical wall and we want it thick in that corner. Having said all that, we think it's going to be about 25 cubic feet, which turns out to be about 0.7 cubic meters. Like 35 bags of the, the ready to mix cement with aggregate in it. And we thought that, by, based on the price of the bags, would be about 350 or 400 bucks. We've got to go get the bags, we've got to get a mixer, mix it, mix it the right ratio, and then pour it in here. And what we found was we talked to a local concrete guy. And he says, oh, I'll deliver you a cubic meter for 380 bucks, tax in. That's cheaper than it's gonna cost us to buy the stuff that we have to mix. So we're gonna not mix anything. It's kind of just goes to show sometimes doing things yourself doesn't save you. Now doing what we've done so far, I'm certain saved a pile of money, but fixing the concrete on a bigger job like this, it's not worth it. Hey, we have this long piece of two by eight and we've measured from the bottom of that down to our dirt level and we have 11 inches, which is great because we want five inches of concrete underneath the new hoist, which is needing five and a quarter inches of height for the hoist. And then we want to put a piece of three quarter inch plywood over the top of it. And so you add that all up, you get 11 inches and that's precisely what we have underneath that two by eight. Now, if it's a little, it might be a little low in some places, that's okay because when the concrete gets poured, it's going to be troweled and leveled. So as long as there's at least 11 inches of gap everywhere along there, that is great. Now when I say everywhere along there, I'm not referring to the edges because the soil is tapered here and then it goes flat 11 inch gap. But up in this area, it's definitely not 11 inches there and that's totally okay. So next steps are to drill. We're gonna do dowels every 15 to 20 inches, drill into the concrete and maybe eight, 10 inch holes, probably eight inch holes, and then epoxy rebar in there and then bend the rebar down so it makes a frame underneath where the new concrete is going to be poured. We definitely don't want the rebar exposed after the pour. It, I don't know the spec, but anyway, we're going to make it at least an inch in from the outer surface of, of the new concrete. Then we have to build the form. Here you can see us marking the holes on one side and then drilling them. Of course, we drilled all four sides, but the clip only shows one side. There's all the holes drilled for the rebar. I'll take an air hose, blow all those holes out. I'll get the rebar fit first because I got to do some bending to sort of follow the contour of the bottom of this hole. So once I get that figured out, then I'll fill the holes with epoxy, put the rebar in and... The half inch rebar was easily bent and formed in a vise. It took several trips going from the hole back to the vise to get the contour just right. And we placed all the rebar in the hole. All the holes drilled, got uh, rebar bent and fitted for the short side. And there's one long piece that's going to go for the long side. I'm going to finish off the epoxy those in. We built the frame out of one and a half by six inch lumber. And <clears throat> we secured it to prevent racking with some cross bracing here. We had fooled around with these long pieces of two by eights that were spanning the old concrete, holding the foreman over to the new concrete. But the gentleman that's gonna do the finished troweling said that that's gonna impede his ability to work around there, and we agreed. So he had these very functional spikes that got driven into the ground, and then they actually have screw holes, so the spikes are attached to the form. So basically the only thing holding this form in place are these eight or nine spikes. After the concrete gets poured, and when he gets kind of closer to finishing the job and the concrete's all set up, those spikes will come out and then he'll probably drizzle a little bit of concrete down in the hole and he'll probably do it like the uh, chefs do with the salt. Probably like that. Yeah, we've got this positioned. It's, it's checked for being square. Our rebar, we didn't tie every, in, every corner but, or every intersection, but we tied some to keep it in place. 
And to keep the rebar an inch or two off the floor, we put some rocks underneath the rebar. You don't want the rebar at the bottom of the hole because if that's the case, there's very little strength provided by the rebar to prevent uh, heaving. Not that we think that will happen here, but you really want the rebar, ideally it would be in the center of the slab. In our case, it's gonna be a couple inches up from the bottom. So we're just waiting for the concrete truck to come now. And the only other piece that might not be obvious is what's this piece doing? And this is here to keep the concrete out of that section so that the hydraulic line from the hoist can come up to its controller that will be mounted on the wall. We hear a truck coming. Here it comes. Depositing the concrete into the hole took about 10 minutes. It really was the quickest part of this whole thing. And then the concrete truck was free to leave. So it was nice to get that stage over. This concrete's going to set up over the next couple hours. Then those spikes will be removed. Just want to show you the finished product here. So we have a nice piece of three quarter inch plywood covering the hole and it's completely flush to avoid stripping hazards if the vehicle's not in the garage. When say a transmission is ready to come out of this car, the hoist can go down the uh, plywood can go on top and then a floor jack can be put on here. There's your adjustable height workbench if you're doing any kind of woodworking projects or anything at all, like rebuilding that transmission right there. Now you have a work table that's four feet, you know, 32 square feet, right? It really just dresses it up and make it, it makes it a classy, classy installation. Usually when it's in gear with the park and brake on, if we need to drag a vehicle, we just get uh, T-Dog to do it. Of course. No more boards. Three. So yeah. Wheel center line, so 43 inches. Yeah, 43. Three, three foot seven. And then under, underneath. 40 inches, okay, 40 inches. If you're doing brake work and you got a rolly stool, you're at comfortable height for axle work, yeah, nice. Well, um, well, there you have it. That's the end of this video. You got DIY guy one, two, three here and Sean's boost the garage and we have a special guest T-Dog. We are finishing up this project. If you like my videos,